let's talk about the Washington Capitals. Because when it comes to Ovi and his squad, they were one of the teams that got eliminated early in the NHL playoffs. In fact, they lost in the first round after being one of the round robin teams. They got themselves the third seeding overall. They played the New York Islanders in the first round, and we all kind of know what happened then. They were playing against their old coach in Barry Trotz, the guy whom they pretty much just refused to pay because we know that Barry Trotz, after coming off of a Stanley Cup victory for Ovi and his squad, was due for some big bucks. But the Caps didn't end up wanting to do that, so they got rid of him. Todd Reardon became their head coach, and then they played in the playoffs. And they lost pretty badly to the guy who was their former bench boss. Yeah, Barry Trotz and his New York Islanders, their system was able to overtake Washington's. They lost in five games, and now the Islanders are in the Eastern Conference Finals against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And these playoffs have been really weird because the New York Islanders are the only remaining team that was a qualifying play-in series team that's actually still alive here in the playoffs. The last one was Vancouver in the second round of the playoffs after the beginning 16. Only two play-in teams actually won their series against round-robin teams. That was the Isles against the Capitals and the Canucks against the champion St. Louis Blues team. But we have ourselves a little idea here brought up on by Michael Russo on his show that discusses just exactly what went on with the Washington Capitals. So I thought this was an interesting enough idea to make a video about. So let's go over onto James Account for Hockey's Twitter account and talk about what Russo said on his Russo Hockey Show. He says this. Yeah, well, I mean, the stories from inside the bubble about the Capitals basically turning it into a vacation having pool parties and things like that, you pretty much knew that they had no interest in being there. And that's a really bare-bones, somewhat basic kind of quote. I know that. It's just, this opens up a little bit more of an interesting discussion as to how championship teams, teams that were really good before or legitimately just straight-up champions previously, have the ability to just straight-up lay off the gas pedal. We saw this year after year in the 2010s, where the Stanley Cup champion one year gets eliminated in the first round the next year. It happened very frequently. And sure, I know Washington won the Cup two years ago in 2018, but the same thing happened to the 2019 Blues in this year's playoffs where they lost to Vancouver in round one. Furthermore, this also highlights a lot of other ideas as well. The fact that the Washington Capitals were not really in a position where a cup was their number one priority. Sure, Ovi probably wants to win it a lot, and we saw guys like Ovi out there trying their behinds off against the New York Islanders in Game 4, pretty much. And I guess you could say the other games too, but come on, let's be real. Game 4. But a lot of the other Washington Capitals were in a position where people were quick to point out that, yeah, a lot of these guys did indeed have kids. They had families. And for a team that was literally a championship team two years ago, it's fair to understand that winning a cup just isn't as important today than it was two years ago, before Ovi had a cup, before that legacy was cemented with the Washington Capitals. And I don't want to say that this team came out here not trying. But I will say that it's a legitimate argument to make that because they're playing in this weird bubble where teams are only allowed to be with each other, they're not allowed to bring in their families, they're fighting for a championship that they've already won, as well as the fact that they played against an Islanders team that just had their number. First off, who in the world is going to know how the Capitals play? Who doesn't work for the Capitals? It's probably going to be Barry Trotz of all people. Secondly, the Islanders were just so determined, and we've seen that determination take them as far to playing against Tampa Bay in the Eastern Conference Finals. They're heading to Edmonton, guys. The Islanders have been so good, led by Barry Trotz. You know this guy wants to take this franchise to the promised land, doing their thing and beating out every single Islander season that they had with John Tavares. But Washington was just on the receiving end of that. And these stories that Russo was talking about, talking about how lackadaisical and nonchalant they had appeared to be during their leisure time in the bubble, can be seen as an indicator that says, okay, maybe they weren't as determined as some of these other teams to win it. All factors considered. The weird bubble, no family time, they've already won. It's a fair argument to make. 
But now the big question is, where exactly do the Capitals go from here? Because we had this Todd Reardon firing that happened a few days ago, we get that, and now we have leaks coming out that say that Gerard Gallant as well as Mike Babcock have both been interviewed for the Capitals head coach position. Now it's kind of funny because when it comes to Mike Babcock, I've been seeing so many Capitals fans going out there and saying, why do we want Babcock? No, I don't want Babcock, especially after the horror stories that came out of Toronto. If you weren't informed, we already talked about this in a few videos, but Mike Babcock's way of, let's just say, developing, quote unquote. And I say quote unquote because I don't really know if developing is the right word. Developing his young guys and lighting a fire underneath them, I guess I would say. His methods of doing that in Toronto, man, a lot of people would low-key say that it's kind of bullying, somewhat of a mental warfare, low-key, mentally degrading in a way, and I guess through some twisted variation that should have been used to allow the players to play better. If you want to hear more about the story I'm referring to, you can check out the video we made about Babcock and the Mitch Marner thing. That was the big story that got everybody talking in Toronto. But a lot of Capitals fans were saying, okay, he did this to Mitch Marner. What's he going to do to Vrana or McMichael or Alexiev? If any of these young guys come onto the team, how do we know that Mike Babcock isn't going to pull the same old rank your teammates in order of least working to hardest working and then I'll tell them about it later in the meeting? Like, that kind of stuff is just really weird, man, and I don't really know how beneficial that could be. So I think it's completely understandable as to why some Caps fans would be wary about the whole sign Babcock idea. Furthermore, we have Gerard Gallant, who we know what he has been up to, not just being a very big goon and point producer for the Red Wings a few decades ago, but also doing his thing with the Vegas Golden Knights. He was a guy who took this team all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals, and in a first-year head coaching position with this hockey club, that's certainly a great resume-building piece. And he got fired by the Vegas Golden Knights earlier this season. They were 24, 19, and 6 when he got fired from their head coaching position. And a lot of people questioned the move because Gallant was legitimately a very good head coach during his time in Vegas. But now it's Peter DeBoer in Vegas, and he took that team over to the Western Conference Finals. That's still going on. They're down one nothing at the time of this video's recording, so haha. -ha. But Gerard Gallant is literally the guy who the Washington Capitals and Barry Trotz defeated in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2018. So there is no real other head coach on the market who is as successful in the short term as Gallant is, which is why a lot of Capitals fans are saying, okay, go for Gallant, get this guy, come on. We've seen what some of these other coaches can do with teams that eliminate them or that teams that are rivals with them immediately after getting hired. It literally happened with Vegas. Peter DeBoer, coach of the Sharks a year ago, they eliminated Vegas after being down 3-1 and coming back to win game seven. DeBoer is over there in Vegas. He's doing wonders. Barry Trotz was the Capitals guy and the Caps really have not had any love for the Islanders over the years. And now Trotz is over in New York there in the Eastern Conference Finals. Who knows what Gerard Gallant could do with a Washington Capitals team that up internally probably would still want to win something. It's just kind of funny how Mike Babcock is also here in this position as well, much to the dismay of Caps fans, and it's also really interesting how their whole bubble performance under Todd Reardon apparently was just completely shut down, not just by the Islanders, but by the Capitals' own demeanor in the bubble as well. Do I doubt that at least one or two Capitals really were super determined to win the Cup? Definitely not. I think if you ask Ovechkin, he would say that he wants to win it again and again and again. We know that this is the kind of competitive spirit that a guy like Ovi has. But just watching the way the Caps played in games 1, 2, and 3. Sure, the Islanders were great, but there was an equal amount of non-greatness coming out of the Washington end too. So hearing about these pool parties and their overall nature during the bubble, it's not really surprising to me, especially since they're a former championship team. So talk to me in the comments below what you think about this whole idea of the Capitals not really being there, mentally speaking at least. They were physically there, but not mentally in the game to participate there and actually compete to the point of victory. Talk to me in the comments also what you think about the whole head coaching situation, Babcock, Gallant, there are other teams that need head coaches as well. So. Who gets their bets in there first? For Washington, I would not be surprised if they made strong bets for either of these two guys. 
It's just, we'll need to see how this team wants to compete next season once everything is said and done, and once we have a normal playoffs next year, hopefully without a bubble, and hopefully in a position where the teams can see their families as well, because that's certainly important too. So, I hope you enjoyed this video of the Trolls 99, and bye. <laughs>